Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for tuning in, however you may be doing so, be it on air, online, live streaming through the free and reliable iHeartRadio app, or joining us over on our social media pages, including, of course, the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook, El Paso History TV over on YouTube, similar pages on Twitter and Twitch.tv, and, of course, on some of our great partner pages, including Remember in El Paso when today is Saturday, November 5th, and today we are talking about some unique history and the history of both buildings you can still see in the borderland, but of course the particular history of the person who designed and how they were presented and her own history and place within the canon of architectural history, Mabel Welch. Do have a history moment today at the top of Hour 2 from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk talking about another notable architect of our area, Henry Trost, but this is of course the place where we say Texas history begins in El Paso. So, of course, make sure to uh, be over on our social media pages. Drop those comments. We do appreciate them if you want to chime in there. But, of course, joining us here in studio today, we are joined by Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Andrew. Hey, good to see you again. Good to be here today. Absolutely happy to have you on to talk about these kind of things because in an interesting twist, the last time you were on this program talking about something completely different, there was a mention of this subject here. So, again, what we're discussing today is is Mabel Welch, who is, again, not, not a figure that I will admit I'm the most familiar with, even though going through this and some of the things we were talking about ahead of the program, I'm definitely familiar, aware of or I've seen her work, and it's still very much a, a part of the landscape that we have out there today. So for someone who is in a similar position that I was up until very recently as we were preparing for this program, not familiar with the figure and the history of Mabel Welch, where do you go about starting to discuss her? Um, I think that the uh, the very first thing that needs to be mentioned about Mabel Welch, and uh, I believe you have a photograph of her mm-hmm. that we can show. Okay, uh, there she is. Um, Mabel Claire Vandenberg Welch. Uh, she is a native of northwest Mississippi, born there in 1890, hmm. um, arrived with her family as a child. She was nine, nine and a half years of age in 1899. In uh, Miller County, Arkansas, Bowie County, Texas, uh, the Texarkana area, uh, which I'm very familiar with. That's my hometown. Oh, okay. so oh, there you go. Yeah, I grew up on the other border. Um, but uh, but uh, uh, she grew up there in uh, the central part of Bowie County. Mm. Uh, DeKalb is the name of the name of the town. Graduated from high school there in 1910, and uh, uh, married uh, Malcolm Welch. Malcolm Hiram Welch in, mm-hmm. in uh, 1915. They moved to El Paso the following year. Um, he was a gentleman who knew how to build and, f- okay. and frame houses. Their marriage was one of, um, in part, of a business partnership. Okay. okay. They, they, they had one child, a son, Elvin, who was born at uh, Providence Hospital, old Providence Hospital mm-hmm. here in town. Um, interstate uh, hastened the removal of old Providence Hospital. Of course, near yeah. the near the uh, near the um, uh, side of Santa Fe Street, where Santa Fe and, and Prospect Streets are yep. at the interstate. It's right there at that um, that uh, intersection with Interstate. Mm-hmm. Um, one son, uh, uh, Malcolm was a was a contractor. Is what it boils down to. Mm-hmm. And Mabel had studied interior design. She had, after high school, she had uh, mm, apprenticed okay. on interior design. So the two of them had a had a partnership about uh, building and designing homes. You do kind of the outside, the framing, like you said, and she would right. kind of you know fill out the interior, so to speak. That's right. And so uh, the reason that they came to El Paso, did not stay in Northeast Texas, is um, um, Malcolm had gone for a physical in 1916 mm-hmm. and the uh he was rejected for military service okay. of course i mean 1916 is a you know momentous set of occasions there whether you're talking about of course you know world war one and mm-hmm. those conflicts go the great war at the time uh or even tech conflicts going on in this region around here or right. related to anyway with say the mexican revolution going on so a lot of that going around at that point in time and it was odd that a young man would be rejected, but there was a medical reason for, 
for doing so. Mm -hmm. And uh, the doctors discovered that he had tuberculosis. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and so they prescribed a warm, dry climate. All right. Uh, so we're all familiar with the fact that El Paso, Santa Fe, New Mexico, Tucson, Arizona were all destination points for people back east suffering from tuberculosis. And there were sanatoriums here mm -hmm. in which, um, for his health, the, uh, the couple moved here. Mm -hmm. um, the yeah. theory being essentially that getting away from uh, humidity, anything that could cause the lungs issues would therefore be uh, getting you. And a lot of outdoor time. I know there's also pictures uh, from people up in like uh, the Cloudcroft area of uh, being bundled up in like just looking like miserably cold conditions, but outside specifically because the fresh air, the cold, high yes. desert fresh air was thought to be the best thing or one of the best things available anyway at that point in time. Absolutely. And, and that's exactly what the doctor prescribed. Um, I'll get ahead of the story, but it's important. Mm -hmm. In 1966, when she was um, 76 years of age, mm -hmm. uh, sat down at the typewriter, Mabel Welch, mm -hmm. and she banged out a 41-page memoir simply mm -hmm. titled My Life. And, and uh, unfortunate, I have a, a, a photocopy oh, of, of that document. And in the... Um, uh, in this very brief uh, memoir, she talks about that trip from Bowie County on the train to hmm. El Paso. Neither one of them had been to El Paso before. Uh, somewhere in the Odessa Midland area, mm -hmm. it, it would have been west of there, um, the train was robbed, actually. Really? It was stopped. And there were, she describes it as, you know, literally bandits. Mexican bandits who came on board the train wow. and went through the cars and and took you know took people's nice shiny things and their money. So they they arrived here with uh, with very little actually. Wow. It was okay. uh, um, it was not the the most hospitable of welcome means, but but they made El Paso home and for the first couple of years. Um, uh, you know, Malcolm was, was working mm. and, um, um, 1920, their son is, he turned one that mm. year in December of 1920, but in 1920 to 1924, during that four year period, um, Malcolm and Mabel Welch are working assiduously to build homes mm -hmm. and the area that they were building in was described at that time as East El Paso. Mm -hmm. And that er that area is uh, now rightfully described as Central El Paso. Right. All right. So the basically in the area near the Five Points uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, intersection, that that area of town. So along you know Persian and Tularosa Avenues, mm -hmm. right over in there, um, east of downtown, and and so they were building primarily the uh, the California brick bungalow. So a one story, and we'll see some photographs uh, in a moment. But mm -hmm. a, but it's a one story, um, uh, front gable, uh, front full length porch that's recessed, um, multiple windows, okay. and, and a and just a, a a side facing roof that's steeply pitched, and it's a very simple home design. Okay. Um. The very first, just as a personal note, the very first house I ever bought in El Paso on mm -hmm. Memphis Avenue uh, fits this very description. But it was built in 1917, so it would not, not have, have been, been them. Not have been them. But I think the home right beside our house was a Mabel Welch home. Okay, so I we think so. And so this is kind of an uh, atypical example of this, right? That's right. This is very and. And in this photograph, this is over on Wheeling Avenue in, in mm -hmm. the Manhattan Heights neighborhood. On the uh, on the right side of the photograph, you can see a red brick home on the just mm -hmm. on the edge. That is the the Welch. That's Mabel and Malcolm's house right there. That's it. And so um, early on, uh, this is the home that that uh, that they built, and she lived in this house um, into the uh, early 1930s. Okay. Before before she moved, but in comparison to homes that she later designs, 
this is an example of what she and her husband were were building and designing, and and they did a good job. There's good there's good solid uh, construction. I mean, it's, it's still there at the very least. It's still there, and it's well built, and and yet we don't typically think um, of the bungalow uh, as as a very high form of architectural design. It is a very functional. Uh, sure. Topography, a, a typology of a home, um, they're ubiquitous. They're all over uh, this area of El Paso, but their their origin is in Southern California, and and you know they they became popular and were adopted in many other states, including well to the east into Florida. So it's a it's a it's a a very typical American mm-hmm. uh, residential building type, and so that was that was their home. Uh, for um, for the first, uh, oh, they lived in that house from twenty four until uh, until nineteen thirty one, or at least Mabel did. And the reason I say that mm-hmm. is because um, Malcolm, of course, was was diagnosed with a debilitating mm-hmm. right. He had a debilitating condition, and after nineteen twenty four, his his uh, his disease was progressing. Mm-hmm. Um. I think that uh, to your question about you know where do we put where do we begin with Mabel Welch, okay? mm-hmm. and and uh, one of the one thing that that um, is very clear to me in my my studies of her building mm-hmm. types and and her story is that she is an architect, mm-hmm. okay, an architect, not a not a woman architect, not a female architect. She is an architect mm-hmm. because in my mind. You are either an architect or you are not an architect. Okay. okay. So you're a doctor or you're yeah, not. Or you're yeah. not. Okay. You're a cardiologist or, or you are not. You are a an attorney or you are not. Very simple. You know, so I think we begin by saying she is an architect. And the other thing we begin is saying that uh, a critical examination of her her biography and her building types are very important because, uh, as we will discuss with you know through the show, mm-hmm. um, a study of the works of Mabel Welch is an exercise in architectural forensic science and research. Okay, and and um, unlike some of the uh, some of the architects whose names have appeared. Uh, on not only on this show but you know in other dialogues mm-hmm. uh, when you talk about the works of, of trust and trust architects and engineers you have a lot of primary source uh, sheets drawings information uh, company records mm-hmm. photographs that you can draw upon you have ample information mm-hmm. um, you look at someone like uh, the great architect Louis Kahn who is you know, one of the one of the masters of the twentieth century. Well, it's easy to study Louis Kahn because there's a copious body mm. of of his work to to draw upon, examine, to put into context, to to explore, to write about, and the like. And so, what we what we do not have with Mabel Welch is a comparable body of work. And we'll get to that later on. Mm-hmm. I think in the radio business, y'all call that a tease. Is that correct? A little bit. And that might be a good tease for right now because, I mean, there is a decent body for work still extant out there that is yes. occupied among other things. But well, let me just say there's a juxtaposition I'd like to draw between developers in the modern sense who are thought about you're know, going out building subdivisions at a time, sure, individual houses included mm-hmm. in that, but that right. you're, you got a couple of patterns, you choose that from your developer and you do that versus the way that, well, what she started beginning to do as uh, some of these changes came along here, because of course we mentioned then uh, popped up that one house of hers where, I mean, again, to juxtapose it with all the modern traditions uh, where a lot of modern building is, uh, the garage is right at the front. These were very porch front 
kind of houses yes. where there were maybe long drives around the back here, part of what we're looking at with those pictures, and we'll have more up here. But tell you what, we've got to take that first break of the hour right now. Coming out of this break, we'll be talking, of course, more about Mabel Welch, her history, and continued influence on this area because you can literally still see it out there. So, again, joining us here in studio is Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces. You want to find out more about what we're talking about here and some of the other work and research he's done even on this subject. He's got a blog up now, Notes on Arid America. Dot com. That's notes on arid, A R I D, America dot com. But we'll be talking more about Mabel Welch and more of these discussions about architecture, history, and what you can still see today here in the borderland after this next break. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. We're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano, and see their website at missiondelray.com, 915-440-2140, for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, 
decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features... Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. We are, of course, the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook. You can go there each and every week for our promo announcements on the programs and what is coming up in the next week. Also, go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. If you want to talk about archive purposes, that's probably the better option for you there. It's a little bit more sign-in neutral, and uh, they just want you to watch it as opposed to any other platform uh, wanting you to definitely sign in for it. So if you don't have any of those logins, accounts, or anything, definitely recommend the YouTube. And not only can you see this program also when it's uh, streaming, but even the archive of this show on its own as we've been doing it on social media, but also the entire El Paso Gold DVD series from Capstone Productions covering more than the last couple of decades of history and documentary production here in town from them, uploaded for free for your viewing pleasure, plus the more recent 20 segments from our ABC7 TV series, El Paso History TV, uh, Bernie Sargent hosting there, and I was behind the camera and behind the computer doing the editing on a whole lot of those here, so I had my hand in that as well. Reminder to support some of our advertisers, Pepe's Restaurant and Canyon Tio, open for in-house dining. 6761 Donovan Drive. Call Peppies at 915-877-2152. 915-877-2152. It is the home of the Juan and only Margarita. I'll be out there actually a little bit before our airing of this program today. So if you want to catch me out there, be out there more or less right after I say this as it airs during our program here. But uh, duty calls for other things, so I won't be out there the usual after program time frame. But more than welcome to stop by again. The great old Griggs recipes kept alive and in a new location, 6761 Donovan Drive. Again, and the number to call for them. 915-877-2152. But we are, of course, joined here in studio by Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces, talking about the figure, the character, and the literal impact on the landscape of Mabel Welch. And so we were talking about some of her arrival in town, some uh, inauspicious circumstances of uh, getting here. I would argue it wasn't the welcome that was... Uh, well, not welcoming, but the process of getting to the welcome. But that's uh, that's maybe more of a quibbling point. But the interesting factor of how she got here in town and uh, the business that she found herself into, both doing the interior design along with her, of course, husband doing the actual architectural design. But uh, again, we were kind of drawing that distinction between the way development happened at that time, essentially, versus how it is now when you take on you know whole streets or blocks at a time and build out individual houses. The developer provides you like hey, here's the pattern of house you want here. I mean. There may have been a little bit closer to that at the start here, like you were giving kind of the example of uh, the type of home that uh, California bungalow with the very porch forward, thick columns on it, then leading into the major house area with, you know, peaked or uh, gabled roofs there. Mm -hmm. But then things changed a bit, right? They did. And and what we're looking at is um, a very important moment in, in her career. Uh, in some ways, Mabel Welch is the accidental architect. I okay. mean, she's learning um, uh, to assist her husband as his health deteriorates. Mm -hmm. There's there's a, a business side of project management that, yeah. that she was really not aware of. And Malcolm was. Uh, there, there's a whole scope of work that is required on acquiring building materials mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and labor. And so you have to have, you have to have the materials and that schedule is very important about when you're pouring concrete, when oh, yeah. bricks are laid, mm -hmm. when, when you're framing, when you're roofing, the whole nine yards. And you also have to have um, reliable uh, uh, workmen in mm -hmm. order to assist. And, of course, it is a business, and there is a whole financial aspect. Got to make money at it, can't be wasting money, etc. That's right. So as Malcolm is, is uh, declining, mm -hmm. he is teaching her uh sometimes vicariously i mean he's bedridden at, at long stretches and he is teaching her the uh, the intricacies of of project management okay and financing mm -hmm. okay so this is real important because uh we always think of architecture as you know this this enlightened uh discipline grand strokes on broad right. you know blue grid paper kind of thing and you're you're an artist. Yeah. You're you're mm -hmm. you're touched by the muse, the whole nine yards. Okay, it's the, it, Frank Lloyd Wright described architecture as the mother art, and in many ways it is because mm -hmm. it's it's an it's an art which really defines uh, humanity in so many ways. But there is a practical, pragmatic side to it. I mean, you can be a great designer, mm 
Sure. But it really is necessary for you to understand how to to manage a project successfully and within budget. So where uh, initially where Mabel Welch's contribution is uh, here to El Paso in particular is that this area of East El Paso, you know, the central part well, now, mm-hmm. the central part of El Paso. It was east of what El Paso was at the time. That's exactly right. And everything is temporally important in context. Absolutely. Um, Manhattan Heights is mm-hmm. a very well-established neighborhood. In the early 1920s, Manhattan Heights is an area on the northeast of downtown, mm-hmm. and it has potential for development. Now, Last week, the Texas Society of Architects mm-hmm. met in the city of El Paso mm. for the first time since mid-October of 1977. Forty-five years have gone by. <laughs> that, that's been a minute, yeah. Since, since their most recent um, uh, conference here. And so during that conference, uh, uh, the architect, uh, Mar- Martina Lori, she and I conducted a, a tour of homes that Mabel Welch designed. Okay. And the, the name of that tour was uh, The Neighborhood That Mabel Built. And in many ways, and this is this needs to be developed more fully at, when we come back from break, yeah. but, but this whole idea uh, of what you were saying a moment ago about, about developing a subdivision as it is practiced uh, contemporarily, how we do it now, mm-hmm. versus a century ago in the 1920s yeah and and so we can you know um we'll pick up that thread momentarily but that's that's one of the great contributions Mm -hmm. uh not many people can say i really did build a neighborhood not many people can say that particularly in the way it was done at that time here when again i mean each individual project could be a make or break moment here but again gotta take that break right now again joining us here in studio troy ainsworth historic preservation specialist with the city of las cruces coming back out of this break talking more about the figure again mabel welds her impact history and contributions to our area that again can well still be seen on tour as you did the other day here so stay tuned for more on the el paso history radio show here on news radio 690 ktsm you're listening to the el paso history radio show streaming on facebook where you can find archive radio programs the el paso history radio show also streams on the facebook page remember in el paso when run by chief administrator barbara given baney known as bgb check out that page for thousands of archive pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140. For souvenirs, gifts, and decor, Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549, 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. 
Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. Of course, I want to tell you about some of the other great partners in history that we have talking about and promoting history in different ways around the region, particularly uh, we talk a lot about the uh, history and aspects of it, but if you want to get out and see it for yourself, including in uh, many different ways, uh, celebrationofourmountains.org, celebrationofourmountains.org is both a, well, kind of a good phrase to follow, but also a particular set of events that they have going on pretty much throughout the year, including one that started a little bit earlier in the morning that uh, this is airing, including a hike to the Ruby Mine, but if you missed that one, they got a lot more times and a lot more ways to get out there including, of course, the uh, Kilburn Hole Volcanic Crater coming up a little bit later in this month, the uh, Concordia's Chinese Cemetery, uh, Geronimo Cave, introduction to the Rio Bosque Wetlands Park, and that's just reading off the first few next entries there. they got stuff going on through the end of the year already. Again, over on celebrationofourmountains.org, a great way to get out there and not just enjoy, but also have someone knowledgeable with you to explain what some of these features, both the physical, human, physical landscape all around us here. So make sure to check them out, celebrate Celebration of our mountains.org or to search the phrase on your favorite search engine. But in the meantime, of course, we are joined here in studio by Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces. Thanks for sticking around with us here. Yes, sir. You bet. So we have been talking about the figure of Mabel Welch and her... <clears throat> And this, to this point, her family's contribution to some of the local development. And again, the, the whole way development was happening at that point here, before they moved into their own home, that we do have the picture up of it over on uh, Wheeling Avenue, uh, that it was that they would essentially 
start building out a home, and as soon as it was more or less habitable, they would move into it, mm-hmm. and then she would do the whole furnishing thing, the interior design like you were talking about. And so they would, as opposed to, I mean, there are pre-furnished homes, those kind of things, but they would basically build the place, live in it for a minute while finishing it out, and then move on to the next one, and then sell that home kind of as is. So you would be getting, essentially, a ready-to-go, move-in, ready kind of place here that you know someone actually lived in, so you're not worried about, like, well, the toilet wasn't actually connected or anything like those kind of things that can <laughs> otherwise happen. Right, right, and, and and that's exactly correct. So this was a practice that, um, that she and her husband and, and their young son uh, mm-hmm. did up until... Up until the uh, design and the construction of their own home, right. and and uh, so beginning in 1924 is when this practice that they were were using comes to an end with the uh, construction of their their family home. But it's um there is a tragic dimension to the Welch home because mm-hmm. it was it was in essence a duplex rather mm-hmm. than rather than a single family dwelling although by all intent and purposes it it is a single family home mm. the reason i say that is because um malcolm had to have his own quarters right um for fear of transmitting uh tuberculosis to either his wife or or to their son which i mean it's not unreasonable for them to have been concerned about that even if there are more you know specifics of how it can happen here but i mean mm-hmm. that was the reality at the time here as there was also not right exactly antibiotics at that point in time right the the um the fear of transmission no. uh, in fact does inform the design at least the interior design mm-hmm. of this home its configuration and and it is uh it, it it's worth noting that that um uh despite his debilitating condition as it progressed is that malcolm remained very active in mm-hmm. in teaching and and transmitting knowledge, not not tuberculosis, but transmitting yep, sure, knowledge yeah. to his wife in order to help ensure that she was successful. Okay. Uh, now he 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 uh, he at three a.m. on a Monday morning, July 18, 1927, He he did succumb to his disease, and <clears throat> and um, right before that. Um, Right before his death, um, he encouraged her to take their son and, you know, take a little break. And she went to Southern California. Mm-hmm. Okay, now this is very important because late 1926, early 1927, it's not very clear um, when that trip occurred uh, uh, based upon her diary. But, mm-hmm. but it occurs about that time. And when she is in Southern California, presumably her very first trip to Southern California, she sees for the first time uh, an old design language with a new interpretation. Mm-hmm. And this is um, this is uh, traced back to the Iberian Peninsula. So we're looking at Spanish colonial, Spanish revival mm-hmm. as it is being practiced and and uh, executed under the capable hands of architects such as George Washington Smith, who, mm-hmm. is, who is regarded as the father of the Spanish revival in Southern California. Um, the, the fact that, that Smith, uh, ironically, also died prematurely of a heart attack in 1930, mm-hmm. just, as, just as he was beginning to find his, his actual strength, his, his artistic voice, mm-hmm. Um, he suffered a heart attack, a fatal, fatal heart attack, and and yet, um, by practice, he was an attorney, which is no. very interesting. He okay. was yeah, he I was a gentleman architect. He had an office and a studio in his home, mm-hmm. and he knew how to draw, and he knew how to design. And it was a very uh, what he would attempt to do is to uh, develop a site in which a home would be situated on it. Um, the interior and the exterior were very much integral and connected. Mm-hmm. So site development for him, a home on a site was only part of the equation. Landscaping, mm-hmm. the, the, the actual topography of the ground that he's working with, the orientation of the building to capture a certain uh, view shed or, or um, uh, what we are very sensitive to, especially in the borderlands, 
about south facing windows and you don't, um, want, you don't want to have bedrooms for example on the west side of a home to soak up the afternoon sunlight right. you're, you're, it's not a good idea to have your front porch facing due west those sorts of of course yeah. those sorts of uh of um of considerations that we take into the design language so this trip to southern california is real important because when when mabel returned with her son she she knew that that malcolm's time was was short Mm -hmm. and her intention was to complete a the the few remaining ongoing projects that they had to finish the few bungalow houses that they were working on or that i mean she was managing right and, and malcolm was was supervising if you will vicariously right and and then she was going to quit she was going to stop and and do something else because uh you know she recognized she is about to become a widow the uh the it, several days before his death the uh, ambulance arrived at the at their home and and uh, conveyed him to the hospital and she rode with him in the hospital and as they were driving west on on wheeling avenue hmm. they passed one of the homes that that she had a greater hand in the design and uh, she noted in her diary that he had looked up you know he was reclining in mm-hmm. the back of the of course in the back of the ambulance and he looked up to have a look out the window as they passed that house and he told her that it, it's very pretty Something on the order of like uh, this one here. Something along, yes, and and that when they drove by and and he admired what she, he admired her work and complimented her, she wrote about that moment in 1966. All those years later, mm-hmm. she wrote about it and she said that gave me the reason to carry on. And so that's an important thing. All right, so two things here: she had her husband's. Uh, support and endorsement which mm-hmm. was very important and she also had firsthand visual um, recognition of the power of designing homes that are predicated upon a cultural dimension so in large part here in, at Paso del Norte we have a, a tradition mm-hmm. well before the Anglo tradition we have the indigenous and we have Spanish um, heritage right here mm. and 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 there's a building language that is uh, intimately related to both of these very distinctive cultures that was amalgamated and and it comes to a um, um a f- a rather interesting architectural development and expression absolutely but tell you what we got to take that next break yeah, let's now. Do that. so going out of this break we'll talk more about that and show you some of the differences here again one of the examples up here of one of the buildings you can still see on wheeling avenue there that uh, may have been the one that they were rolling past he describes there yeah. a little bit more of that uh, some of those design elements that you can kind of see hint of that there are some things like tile and uh, different exterior methods being used with the construction but we'll talk more about that got to take that break again troy ainsworth historic preservation specialist with the city of las cruces here with us in studio back after this break with more on the el paso history radio show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. 
M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos... Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I, of course, want to talk to you about some of our other great partners in promoting different aspects of local El Paso history, including, of course, the musical history in its own right and way. Rick Kern's music podcast, Talk and Rock Radio. Find him, of course, over on Talk and Rock. That's A-N-D, rockradio.com, where he talks a lot about his remembrances, his experiences with some of those early and well-recognized names including such as the uh, Bobby Fully for Bobby Fuller for and a whole lot more there so he has those up on his podcast going to be available for you to uh, listen to it there talk and rock radio.com and of course uh, one of our sponsors we want to mention here at this point called 915-588-1850 that's 915-588-1850 for Patrick Total Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate Patrick is an excellent realtor to go to for homes in El Paso for sale or rent, and he's done a lot of great work for me and my family, including uh, the homes that we are occupying at this very moment, and including other rental and other work going on, so highly recommended. 915-588-1850 915-588-1850 for Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker, Heritage Real Estate. You can speak from experience, worth giving the call if you are in that arena or even looking for anything to be involved with it here. But again, joining us here in studio right now, we are joined by uh, Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces. So we are marking a particularly kind of, you know, tragic, but also a turn point moment in the history of, again, the figure we are talking about today, uh, Mabel Welch, who uh, defined a lot of different architectural things in this region, because two major things going on there, as we were talking about last segment, both the impending and final passing of her long ailing husband, I mean, a condition over over years yes. at this point here of tuberculosis, but also the kind of seminal trip that she took, and that can really be seen in, uh, given some of the previous examples of her constructions, the bungalow style, both on Uh, the one right next to and then their family home up until that point here and even some of the recent dish around that even just a little bit further down the street but we want to make a particular note about this house that was i mean very much a different style an eastern style so to speak the georgian style we were talking about here and this one's a two-story and a bit wider so showing advancements of construction and this one almost almost immediately before her husband's passing right that's correct and and um in her assessment, this is one of the very few homes that, that she designed on this scale, a uh, mm-hmm. uh, vertical scale. And um, the, the, this home is very much very comfortable on the Atlantic seaboard. Yeah, it would and, be. And this home is not very comfortable in the Chihuahuan Desert. And yet, uh, let us not forget, mm-hmm. architects design for the client's uh Preferences and wishes. This is true here, but juxtapose this one again. We're talking about a roughly, you know, uh, five-story, 
five yep. four-story windows at the front that you can see there with right. the kind of, you know, uh, flat front and uh, sloping away from the front roof, kind of Georgian thing, uh, you know, mm-hmm. smokestack on one side, kind of looking thing there. And then this is the one that was one of the first ones you did returning from that kind of Southern California trip, right? Right. And this is uh, this home is over in Galloway, uh, mm-hmm. designed for a couple of members of the faculty at Texas Western College, mm-hmm. uh, over in the English department, a couple of faculty members. And, and this home really reflects a um, again a preference of the uh, of the client we are we see here a small modest home in comparison to the the home that we were just looking at mm-hmm. and in so doing we we see a little bit of northern Spain uh, yeah. is, is evident in this home design this is a very much a vernacular building type uh, that would be found in the Bosque country there in Spain and and she integrates it quite nicely here in the Chihuahuan Desert. Point being, you look at those two houses. One is rather grand and uh, sure. northern European in in tone and tenor in its design, as it as that style is imported to North America and interpreted. And East Coast, Northeast, uh, you know, Northeast U.S. style kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, and then the one we were just seeing, which has very different, a different t- style of roof, if only for the tile there as well, a tile roof, like what right. is the big, you know, kind of uh, rounded tiles that are very common around our region mm-hmm. these days anyway. So those are some of the, again, hints at some of the changes coming here. But tell you what, we got to take that break to hit really? the top of the hour yeah. right now. And we got a lot more to talk about Mabel Welch. So again, joining us here in studio, uh, Troy Angel. With Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces. We'll be talking more with him about this here. And again, you can find out more about the work that he has done, research on this, notes on airatamerica.com. So, Troy, stick around with us, please. We'll do. And we'll be back with you right after this break here with more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. Stay tuned. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page. Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, 
El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV. And features Spanish. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk, and we'll be continuing our conversation about Mabel Welch, the figure, and the impact that she had that you can still see. And we have determined that I actually have been in a Mabel Welch here, but we'll get into that here more in just a second, continuing our conversation with Troy Ainsworth. But in the meantime, starting off hour two of the program, as we usually do with a history moment, produced by documentary filmmaker. Jackson Polk talking this week about another notable and noted architect of our area, that of Henry Trost. One of the most famous architects in the Southwest a hundred years ago was Henry Trost, who was the main architect in the firm of Trost and Trost. Henry was from Ohio and worked in several cities around the Southwest before he joined his brothers in El Paso. When Trost came to El Paso, the small city was booming and businesses were leaving small adobe structures for more modern multi-floor buildings. Many of Trost's buildings in El Paso are still in use and are impressive in their styles. 
such as the Cortez Building on San Jacinto Plaza and the Plaza Hotel, which was recently renovated. The firm was the first in the region to use reinforced concrete in their buildings, starting with the Mills Building in El Paso. Over the next 30 years, the firm created some of the most iconic buildings in the Southwest, taking advantage of the landscape and the climate in their designs. Trost was a master of architectural design who moved easily from one style to another. He worked in the prairie style, as seen in his own home in El Paso Sunset Heights. The Bassett Tower in downtown El Paso is famous for its Chicago Art Deco design. His Mission Revival style was featured in the first Owl Club in Tucson, Arizona, and Pueblo Revival at the Franciscan Hotel in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And many of the butany style buildings on the campus of the University of Texas at El Paso were designed by Trost. Trost & Trost became one of the region's most successful architectural firms, designing over 300 buildings and homes in West Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and Mexico. I'm Jackson Polk with this History Moment for the El Paso History Radio Show. Also at this point during the program, we do like to mention some of our other great partners in talking about local aspects of history. Of course, Barbara Given Bainey, operator of the great Facebook group, Remember in El Paso When. You can go there for archive pictures galore. More than 33,000 members these days, and it's no mean feat to keep such a event and group like that on track. So in order to do that, they have administrators working and moderators working very hard to make sure that, hey, they're researching photos with our history attached. So if you use those photos, please give credit to to the site, but also I was looking for another few good hands, so if you want to know more about that, of course, visit and join the site, uh, the Facebook group again, remember in El Paso when a lot of credit to be given to Chief Admin Owner and Historian Barbara Given Bainey, affectionately known as BGB, along with admins Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret D. Smith, and moderator Ben Vincent. Again, looking for more help if at all you're interested in doing so, reach out to them on Remember in El Paso When. But of course, joining us here in studio right now, as we have had today, is Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces. Thank you for sticking around with us here today. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Thank you, sir. Absolutely, sir. We're talking about another architect here, again, focusing on today, that of Mabel Welch, who not necessarily quite the firm style thing that we're talking about with uh, Trost and Trost, as mentioned there mm -hmm. in the history moment, but impactful in her own right and own way. And again, we're even talking about the impact that she had on herself and her own style, because as we're talking about in the first hour of the right. program, her arrival in town, her beginning of doing the work of, again, that interesting kind of business model of build a house, live in it, to furnish it, and then sell it to someone moving to town in order to uh, have a completely furnished house, which was, I mean, economic development in its own right, but also encouraging people to move maybe uh, within town, sure, mm -hmm. could have been done, but also to move from out of town because... I mean, I could have seen the advantage of such a concept of, well, sure, I need to move to this place, but I don't have anything, and moving cross country is prohibitively expensive. I mean, you're not mm -hmm. packing up everything in the, you know, one of those. Uh, U-Haul was not a concept back then. Let's just put it that way here. So the idea of it being able to be just, yes, there's a house that someone has actually lived in, and that I therefore know is habitable that right. I could then move into is, I mean, appealing in its own right, even if they kind of moved away from that model, and she did also as well due to life changes, and we we're marking some of those changes again showing good some of the previous examples of the house's design pre both the passing of her husband and that southern california trip that you were mentioning here yeah. again markedly different styles i mean pretty much a lot of focus on brick very much a focus on squareness i mean utility of building but also i mean you know usability of it as well very much a focus on client requirements but then we have some of the examples of what happened kind of in that immediate period afterwards right that's right and, and what we see is a remarkable departure mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, the example that i recently used uh, to describe this transition of her design language approach um the transition from composing a song i want to hold your hand <laughs> to okay. to going to a day in the life okay so you have two very different moments in the musical maturation of the Beatles as as okay, musicians. Yeah. Okay. Both of them are are incredible works musically. But markedly different. But very, very different. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, we see uh, or to draw upon an, a a Hemingway reference. Okay. Um writing. He once made a comparison that uh uh, uh he began, when he began, his work could be compared to arithmetic. But after reading the great masters, including Dostoevsky, mm -hmm. he learned 
how to progress to calculus <laughs> as if it, you know, to make a mathematical comparison. Okay, I see what you mean here. Yeah. Increasing in breadth and in complexity of what can be done. That's right. And really looking at, at much more than just, um, uh, just what it does require to to draw and design a home. I mean, she she progressed from mm -hmm. interior design to drawing floor plans to learning business management, uh, excuse me, project management for for home design mm -hmm. and and was really really doing good work but was prepared to give it up. Right. Just 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 give it up and and um and start a new phase of her life. Due to those, again, major life changes. I mean, the losing of a spouse is never exactly described as a simple thing, even if it is protracted as it was here. But That's she was right. given that kind of, you know, the buoyancy of both the support from her husband, even in those moments of, you know, immediately leading, leading up to that. And so she decided to keep going at it. I mean, obviously, there was technical competency there that had, she had been achieving through her time there. And the fact that you know, right. some of the, you know, family homes and the buildings that she was building right up to that point, which obviously she was having to do more and more with, even if... Uh, even if there had been more training to go. And so the decision to continue on with that and to move just beyond, you know, technical competence into, well, almost a more artistic space is significant. That's right. And and what makes Mabel Welch very important here is uh, to move beyond the pitfall that, that both she and, in fact, Henry Trost have been relegated, and that's uh, being described as regional architects. Okay? Mm -hmm. And... And what's what's very interesting, at least in my in my mind, mm -hmm. is that what what Mabel Welch was doing here, uh, beginning in the in the latter part of the 1920s until she did pretty much give up design uh, work in the early 1950s, mm -hmm. um, focused more on other projects for beautification and civic improvement for the city of El Paso. Okay, um, and so she continued to do to to work. Of course, and uh, but but Welch and someone like Mary Jane Coulter, who worked with uh, Fred Harvey and Company, she did. Mm -hmm. She designed buildings for the Southern Pacific. So visitors today who go to Grand Canyon National Park, ah, okay, all right, you go to Robbers Roost, you go to Phantom Ranch, uh, uh, buildings that are on site. Mary Jane Coulter designed those buildings. Mm -hmm. The old the. The now demolished, unfortunately, it's been 52 years ago. But uh, the now demolished uh, Alvarado Hotel mm -hmm. in in uh, Albuquerque, where the uh, there at Central, and um, you know, it's right at the railroad tracks. It was the old uh, hotel right beside the train depot uh, okay. in, in downtown Albuquerque, um, only a few blocks away from the Franciscan Hotel that Trost designed that, right. that your dad mentioned in the uh, the the history moment segment mm -hmm. a moment ago. Um, uh, Julia Morgan was working in California at the same time, and she she worked with George Washington Smith. Mm -hmm. and, and for the record, I just love it, the names George Washington Smith. Smith. I just <laughs> love that. That's a wonderful name. Fair enough. And um, uh, you know, here you have um, a number of women who who are working, and and there were not very many women mm -hmm. working in the field of architecture, and and so. You know, Mary Jane Coulter is on this uh, on this route, basically in central um, uh, New Mexico and along mm -hmm. along the um, along the Southern Pacific line to Southern California. Okay, okay. So, so she's doing work for for the railroad in large part, uh, both interior design, which is ironic. I mean, that's where she had her beginnings, mm -hmm. and and then later designs buildings. And this is very much you know she and uh, Mabel Welch are on parallel. Uh, professional okay. courses in, in yeah. many way. Julia Morgan out in Southern California is doing a lot of, of design work and learning very well in her art as you know just as her contemporaries in in El Paso Texas and in mm -hmm. Grand, Grand Canyon Arizona are doing as well so you know the what's really important about Welch is in a larger perspective you know she again is an architect now, her son, um, several of us interviewed her son and grandson. Oh, really? Okay. 14 years ago. It's, it's already been 14 years. It was uh, the second day of November of, of 2008. 
Okay. And this so, was this yeah. was over at the Burgess uh, house uh, there there in Yandel. Uh, pardon me. And um, um, uh, Elvin Welch mentioned that his mother was very very busy at all times. I mean, she always worked. Uh, mm. Now, very much like George Washington Smith, his studio was at the house, and and so was hers. I mean, she had an office at home. Okay. And that's sure. where she worked. So in the business directories for El Paso, you're not going to find a listing for Welch Architects or, or anything like that. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, it, it is at home. But he said, he said, Mom was always working, always designing houses, and, and, and that's what, you know, her primary focus. Mm-hmm. Um, when asked, well, how many homes do you think your mother designed? And he thought about it for a moment. He said, I don't know, maybe 1,200, 1,500. Now, that may be... Uh, a little bit north of of the actual number. I mean, it may be an exaggerated number. Okay. Uh, that's a prodigious amount of work. Uh, yeah. For, that, you can't see my eyes getting wide if you're on the radio. Right. When you said that, yeah. When you think about a 25, 30 year time frame of of a of a flourishing career uh, before she she went on to other things and pretty much gave up design. Um, that's an uh, an extraordinary number of homes I yeah mean, even even if uh, there's buildings basically fall into one of three categories uh, they're mm-hmm. built they're unbuilt or they are unbuildable okay 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 so a building can exist but it may only be on on paper on uh, sheets okay. of paper and it's never actually been physically constructed so okay kind of juxtaposing design versus actual build out right okay. that's right so we have we have theory and we have practice. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Well, that's basically sense. what it is. And and so it is possible that she designed, you know, 800, 900, 1,000 or more. Kien Sabe. I, I, I don't know. And and I'm pretty convinced that we will not ever really know. Really know. And there's a reason for that. We'll get to that down the road here in a little bit. But one of the things that's real important is that, is that, um, uh, the influence of what she saw in California, including uh, the William S. Hart House in Santa Clarita, California. Uh, mm-hmm. Santa Clarita is north and to the west of downtown mm-hmm. L.A. And uh, uh, William S. Hart was a very, very popular Hollywood actor, silent film era. And in 1925, uh, his home was built and designed in the Spanish colonial style. Um, Andrew Russell is the name of the architect who designed his home. It is a it is a home museum hmm. in, in okay. the county uh, right now, and it has been for years. I mean, of course, he, he's been gone for for decades. Uh, yeah. uh, the actor William Hart, but I'm pretty sure, even though she doesn't mention it in her diary, I'm pretty sure she saw the home because it was brand new when she would have gone to yep, Southern yep. California, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure that she was uh, taken there. She looked at it from the outside, maybe had a tour. I don't know if she went into the home. I'm speculating, of course. But the reason it appears is that in subsequent homes that she designed here, um, you begin to see elements of the heart residence in Santa Clarita, California. You begin seeing it in Welch homes in El Paso, Texas. Interesting. And so um, architecture... Um, uh, in my in my first field of inquiry as an undergraduate at, at, at Texas Tech in the uh, English and the history departments, uh, plagiarism mm. is the, the key word. Plagiarism. You avoid plagiarism. I'm about to say you, plagiarism would be uh, maybe ungenerous here, but influence. Influence is, is what architects is an call it. Inspiration, perhaps, yes. those kind of phrases. And so tell you what, we'll talk more about that coming out of this next break. Got to take that next break for this hour here again. That's Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist for the City of Las Cruces here. We'll pop up some more of the pictures that we'll be, of course, discussing for our radio audience. Don't worry. And more on that after this next break. So stay tuned. More on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. 
Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Another sponsor to remind you about is Mission Del Rey Southwest. You can go there with out-of-town visitors or anyone that you like, including yourself here for souvenir, jewelry, gifts, and decor items. They have both the figurative demonstrative and literal flavor of the southwest whether you want decor items whether you want uh, food items they're constantly getting restocked with that uh, any of those kind of uh, you know mugs things to have around your office or even furniture all the way up to that Specifically, last time I was there, they had gotten this great shipment of actually this uh, cast aluminum but patinaed stuff, looking very much like the cast iron furniture that everyone has sat on at some point in their life. But given that it's cast aluminum, a lot less likely to bust up your foot if it falls over on it. So highly recommend in that way and a whole lot of other selection, including Native American goods uh, sourced directly from uh, indigenous creators and things like that. So check them out. MissionDelRay.com is where you can find them. And they do ship in around the world and nationwide, of course. Again, but their 12,000 square foot showroom there at Lee Trevino and Pelicano. We we'll recommend going up Lee Trevino, turning on Pelicano uh, towards the west at that point, and you'll see the Mission Del Rey Southwest sign. I just mentioned the El Paso History Radio Show for a discount, but if you want to find out any more details about them, again, missiondelrey.com or give them a call, 915 440 2140. That's 915 915- Four four zero two one four zero. But of course, I want to tell you about what's coming up next week for you on the program. Next week on the show, going to be talking about Mount Cristo Rey, visiting with uh, Ruben Escondón of the Mount Cristo Rey Restoration Committee, and talking about some of the changes with the pilgrimage is going on, how it's a return to tradition in its own way, as well as the long history of the Restoration Committee, the generations that have been involved with that, including some of Ruben's own family. So stay tuned for that next week on the program. But joining us here in studio today, we do of course have Troy. Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces, talking about, again, Mabel Welch, that very interesting and intriguing feature and figure in their own right as they're talking about the development of the Southwest region, and particularly our area, that was also taking a lot of, again, influence is the phrase we're going to use here from other places. So out of last segment, we were talking about some uh, interesting differences that could be seen both from her and with others uh, in the work that they were doing, but more specifically, uh, some of the buildings that you wanted to mention here, there's a couple of that could be seen along uh, Rim Road, right? There are. And, in fact, for anyone uh, in the listening audience who has driven along Rim Road uh, as you drive that that wonderful stretch of, oh, of yeah. asphalt, uh, a lot of the houses that front Rim Road are of her design. And I've realized through our conversation here today that I have been in at least a couple here, including someone who I am not going to try and give any uh, trouble to by mentioning them directly here, but <laughs> I've great appreci- greatly appreciated their time and the time I've spent in their house previously. So I've been able to have a first-hand experience with a Mabel Welch that I didn't fully realize here, but some of the design elements on the one we're looking at here, again, just going to pop up some of the previous ones that we were talking about. This was some of the previous bungalow style, but then right. this one along Rim Road, we're looking at 
again, it, we're getting beyond the kind of basics of design. They kind of very rectangular into mm-hmm. different angles, different building materials. Again, the tile roofs definitely a stark difference, but also even the wall and the exterior material construction. What are some of the aspects you'd want to focus in on on this? If you'll note, you see basically the intersection of two uh, building blocks, okay? Mm-hmm. And, and what you're looking at, instead of a unified prototypical bungalow, mm-hmm. you know, a, a rectangular floor plan. Right. Okay? The enclosed space where the, the focus and the concentration are four right angles, Mm-hmm. to define the corners of the home. Sure. And then the interior is partitioned for particular uses. But it's a very simple approach. Sure. All right. So as her uh, ability begins to mature and as she's beginning to um, uh, articulate in a, more, in a more sophisticated and complicated manner, design elements, it is not so much... The reliance upon decoration, you know, sure. uh, what the Czech writer Milan Kundera would call kitsch. Um, kitsch or flourish, maybe another way I would right. put it here. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so what she's looking at is um, uh, designing around a very simple mm-hmm. uh, philosophy. And she was asked about this, um, mm-hmm. uh, in fact, uh, in October, late October of 1934. And, and the way she replied was that uh, she envisions uh, that every home that she designs is designed around a dream. And by that, what she meant was, okay. I think about the dreams and the aspirations of who I am designing for. And so my part is to make that portion of a dream come true, if mm-hmm. you will. This is what, in essence, this is what she is, uh, what she is saying. So in a poetic manner, what she was Speaking to uh, to Kay Burnett or Burkett is is her name Kay Burkett, mm-hmm. who was a journalist here. You know, basically what she was saying is, I design a home after talking to a client. I am going to build a house mm-hmm. for for this individual or this couple, whatever the case may be. I'm going to listen to them. I'm going to listen to what they're you know what is it that they're wanting okay. out of life. Okay, and then she describes it very poetically. It's a dream. I designed the home around yeah, around, sure. yeah. a, around their wants and all that. And and so what you see with that home, if we can put that back up there, up in, uh, up in the 1500 block of Rim Road, here we have something very different. We have a very uh, uh, bold example of a mature design mm-hmm. of, of Spanish, uh, traces of Spanish colonial, elements, particularly mm-hmm. in ironwork and massing, uh, a plaster, white plastered exterior, the fenestration pattern, and the tile roof. Mm-hmm. All of these elements, <clears throat> all of these elements appear in the William S. Hart residence in Santa Clarita, California. Mm-hmm. It's my, uh, it's my, it's my belief that this home here in El Paso she could not have designed that home had she not been to the Hart residence in Santa Clarita. And got essentially seen it real a concept as much as you may have re- read about it, realized, essentially. That's right. It, uh, the architectural magazines of the day featured that home. Mm-hmm. A photograph is important, but it is as, not a... As we're using here as well. That, that's right. <laughs> but it is really no substitute for the real McCoy, right? To, to actually be at a building now if it's someone's private residence you may not have access to you know to enter the home sure but um if you have the opportunity to stand outside a house and look at it and actually regard it and to right. photograph it a little bit and and to notice its small details it's uh it's major details as well then you're better armed than just looking at a photograph that appears in the in, in the uh, black and white uh, journals 
of 1927. Again, first-hand experience here to uh, crib a line from a Goodwill Hunting. Uh, you may have known all the levels of art, but you can't tell me what it smells like in the Sistine Chapel. There's really no substitute for first-hand experience in well a said. lot of ways here to see how it actually works together, fits together, and actually works within a space and then to apply those concepts. That's right. And and when, when you see that transformation firsthand, and, and, and for her, when you see the transition from bungalow to Spanish influence, mm -hmm. and then read that what she is working on is predicated on a cultural dimension, that's pretty fascinating. And it's pretty, pretty heady stuff because in 1938, a, a pamphlet simply titled El Paso Architecture hmm. was okay. published. And the Women's Division of the El Paso Chamber of Commerce published this um, sketchbook and book of photographs and, and, and sparse but really powerful, uh, impactful text. Every drawing in that pamphlet, every photograph of the buildings, and they were all uh, residential, are Mabel Welch designs. Interesting. Every, every one of them. Tell you what, we'll have to leave it there for just okay. a second because we've got to take that next break now. Coming out of this break, talking more again with Troy Ainsworth, again, historic preservation specialist with the city of Las Cruces. You want to find out more and some more pictures about what we're talking about with him and some more of his work and research up over on his site, notesonaridamerica.com. That's notes on arid, A-R-I-D, America.com. But got to take that break now. Coming out of this break, more discussion on this. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690. KTSM. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, 
you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, uh, this week only in El Paso Inc., you'll find unique and interesting reporting on a lot of in depth subjects that are, of course, affecting us here in the borderland. So, if you want to make sure to receive that in each and every week, including being able to see our promo announcements and a little bit more in depth write up on these subjects that we discuss each week, you can, of course, go to ElPasoInc.com and El Paso's business. Journal El Paso Inc. is available for home or business delivery as well. To receive El Paso Inc. or get your digital subscription, I'll order it online at elpasoinc.com. Do appreciate their support and again what we're able to talk about with each other when it comes to uh, different aspects of El Paso's history. But again, joining us here in studio right now is Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces. Thanks for sticking around with us here. Absolutely. So we've been talking a lot about some of the design features, some of the design influences behind Mabel Welch. And I really want to make sure that we particularly focus on the fact that a lot of this body of work, however exactly how many there were, even if that's a little bit between design and actual realizing and building of the design is a question that will remain to be answered, if it ever can be, there's still a lot out there and a lot of very prominent houses that you can see, I mean, as much as I feel like every news station in town has at least once a week a report from Rim Road looking towards downtown, the buildings they are standing in front of are, yes. again, again, the ones that I've been able to be in to on those rows as well are significantly, I mean, they still represent her work, her influence, and all these things we're discussing here. That, that's very correct. And uh, one of the things that's really important to keep in mind is that um, her work is uh, evident in a very wide field. Mm. Um, based upon her 1966 journal, mm -hmm. uh, as far east as Dallas, Texas, and as far west uh, okay. as Ciudad Chihuahua, Estado de Chihuahua. Oh, okay. Okay, so there's, but the the primary, uh, the preponderance is here in El Paso. Uh, a home, at least one home in Marfa, one home okay. I think in Fort Davis, um, Fabens. There's a lot to identify. Mm -hmm. Okay, and 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 that's um, that's uh, proof positive that there's ongoing research. Oh, absolutely. To be done, and and that's uh, that's a, a very promising and and frustrating research really? component. Actually, yeah, it really is because uh, um, records are are very few and far between. Oh, fleeting documentation is often yeah. the bane of any research or historical that's analysis right. being done here. So a, right. a lot of it's going to be looking at influences, but people can, I mean, that's why I had coming into this and delving more into Mabel Welch, that sneaking suspicion that I had been in a Mabel Welch, even if I never knew mm -hmm. it specifically under those terms. Again, trends can be recognized, and we have some more images of some of the things that she was actually designing, right? Such right. as uh, this is another one, not exactly along Rim Road, but you can see some of the similarities with what we have previously talked about along Rim Road. That's right, and this is a very wonderful home. This is the Lee residence on Altura, um, a fantastic house. It's basically a U-shaped floor plan. Mm -hmm. um, it is a, a, a lengthy, rectilinear-shaped home. It's up on an elevated site. Um, you have this, this roof, this uh, uh, shed roof over on the uh, left side there, mm -hmm. and, and you have a, you know, the forward sloping roof, the fenestration pattern, you know, very classical, uh, triptych, one, two, three design. Yeah. And the entrance is right there in the, uh, in the shadow. That's where the front entrance is. A uh, very, very Spanish in, mm -hmm. in its design language. Um, beautiful house. I've been in love with this home for a lot of years. <laughs> okay. And only, only last month was the very first time I've actually been inside the house. Really? Okay. And, and that was amazing because um, one of the important features about the home is that in the living room, the uh, the beams, the large wooden beams mm -hmm. on the ceiling are all salvaged from a trestle bridge that connected El Paso and Juarez. And uh, the, bri the, the, mm -hmm. the bridge was taken down and replaced with the, 
with with another bridge. Of course. Okay. This was when we went kind of the transition from the flat bridges, so to speak, towards mm-hmm. some of the more a modern, but then the the arched bridges that people are more familiar with these days. That's right, and and so you had this great timber. Very sturdy. And it's not just timber. They were often often carved, because I think I've seen, and I was also having this stinking suspicion, another Welch building it may have been in is the uh, current, uh, well, the legacy Harvey family offices that are down there on Donovan that have those, so you can drive by it still today and see those beams out on the uh, covered, thankfully, but on the kind of front porch patio area of it. Correct. And um, one of the great things is that those beams, now when, when the railroad company used them, they just needed sturdy. Oh, yeah, of course. Remember, when an architect gets their hands on it, mm-hmm. okay, then you have a blank canvas, if you will. Oh, of course. For a craftsman to take woodworking tools and to and to carve into the faces um, uh, images and iconography of Spanish colonial uh, heritage. Mm-hmm. So in the particular case in the Lee House, you have on one, two... Three beams, you have the depiction of the Nina, the Pinta, the, and the, the Santa, Santa Maria. Maria. There okay. you go. Mm-hmm. Okay. So a story very much like the European tradition of cathedral building mm-hmm. in the 13th, 14th, 15th centuries, you're, you're telling the story in, in the iconography and in stained glass, in large part because you, you were conveying a sense of biblical tale and Christianity, sure. but you're doing it in a visual depiction because in, in many instances you have a, an illiterate uh, oh, yeah. mass. Okay, so, you know, a mass being spoken in, in Latin, of course, you see this in the, depicted in the film Braveheart, for example. Mm-hmm. Before battle, the priest is speaking, but he is blessing the, um, uh, the soldiers, uh, before they fight, but it, the benediction is in is in Latin because that was, of course, the language of the church. Of here. the church. But even if someone didn't understand that, there was a common understanding through, like I said, iconography but, and the idea of recognizable symbols, which is why even to this day, you know, saints are often associated with specific symbols along with them. It's a it's a shorthand essentially. Even if you can't read it, oh, that's who that is. I recognize that. That's kind of exa- thing. exactly correct. And 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 so, um, I think one of the brilliant parts about about Mabel Welch's design is that these small details are not lost on her mm. and she actually incorporates them to reinforce the, uh, this whole idea. El Paso has a Spanish and Mexican and native heritage mm-hmm. that um, you know, as she pointed out in, in, in something that she wrote will El Paso adopt an architecture that makes El Paso a distinctive place? Now, she's writing this at a time where Santa Fe, New Mexico had right. already mm-hmm. established itself as the city different. Okay, so when you have Anglo writers, painters, architects, poets who come into Santa Fe shortly after the turn of the century, uh, after 1900, and all of a sudden begin establishing Tau San Santa Fe mm-hmm. as an art colony, as a destination for people back east you don't have to look too much further than mabel uh, mabel dodge lujan okay for example okay uh of course the writers who begin to show up dh lawrence and and that Mm -hmm. bunch who are there and they're they're making this place they're providing an identity to it and uh um they're, they're 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 providing this identity at a place and time in this remote corner of the interior of the Southwest, far removed from New York City. Absolutely, and with some uh, differences, and we'll be talking a little bit more about some of the other architecture and uh, buildings we've got going on here. Got to take that break right now. Coming out of this break, we'll get to more talking with, again, Troy Ainsworth here in studio, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces, kind of with some final thoughts here, so stay tuned. More on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. 
Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 
915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com. Thank you all so very much for having joined us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I've been your host, Andrew J. Polk, and of course, joining us here in studio has been Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces. We have talked about quite a lot here involving the history, figure, influences of uh, Mabel Welch here. There's always more left to be said here, but as we're in the last segment here and have uh, a few more minutes left, uh, we of course have some other buildings that we want to show up as more of her, well, examples of her work here, including uh, this one on uh, Gold Avenue as another one, again, stark di difference from some of her earlier work and uh, influences being shown there of that uh, Spanish style here. But when we're kind of reaching the end of our couple hours talking about her and her work in town here and the uh, potential, you know, a couple different hundred, if not a uh, thousand, again, depending on the estimates, uh, buildings that she built in and around town and around the region. What are some of the things that, A, this building, and therefore, you know, through her legacy, you want to mention here? Um, in my assessment, the uh, the Harvey Maddox home that we're looking at right now on the screen uh, is, is the uh, culmination of her mm. creativity. This is, in, in my view, a master work. And just like the Lee House that we were looking at a moment ago, mm -hmm. Um, the Lee House I have admired from from the street for a lot of years, and, mm. and only recently, uh, within the last couple of weeks, was able to actually enter the house for mm. the first okay. time. And the same thing with the uh, with the uh, Harvey Maddox house. Uh, mm. uh, a week ago was the first time I've been inside the home, okay. and, and so it's uh, it's on a permanent spot overlooking downtown El Paso and mm. Ciudad Juarez, and and it's a beautiful beautiful home all the way around the. Uh, um, the Maddox family was very gracious to open up the house for, for mm. us, and it, it also happened that um, uh, their daughter is on faculty at the College of Architecture at Texas Tech University in Lubbock. Oh, okay. And, um, and if, you know, for those of you who know me, I speak fondly of Texas Tech, my, my alma mater. For those in radio land, he's yeah. also wearing a hat at the moment. Yes, <laughs> I have on a tech hat, and, uh, and, and, uh, one of my professors for my Ph.D. program, uh, Dr. Hendrika Bulinks, came over from, from Lubbock, and she and I, and one of her current students, uh, who actually is from El Paso himself, uh, Sergio Villegas, uh, the three of us uh, gave a uh, presentation at the Texas Society of Architects mm -hmm. uh, conference that was held last week, and we, we spoke about Mabel Welch, her work and her legacy, and and so... Um, you know, one of the things that we were discussing is, uh, yes, influence and design language and, sure. and cultural dimension and, you know, w Welch's place in, in architect, uh, architectural um, history. Uh, in 1945, a, a textbook was adopted, uh, published and adopted at Yale yeah. University okay. in, in the School of, of Engineering and Architecture at Yale. In that book, it's called uh, "Better uh, Designing Homes for Better Living" is the name of the book. Okay. Ironically, four homes designed by Mabel Welch appear in that textbook. Wow. And okay. uh, I'm fortunate. Um, yes, I am that kind of a nerd. I own a copy of that textbook. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> From 1945, so. I do. I do have a copy of it, and um, um, you know, it's uh, it, it's indisputable that Welch is an important architect mm -hmm. and and the 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 
productivity is a is a just a portion of the testament to her place in architecture. Uh, the fact that her works were known as far as New ha- as far east as New Haven, Connecticut, mm-hmm. and that her work by clients uh, extends from Dallas all the way to Ciudad Chihuahua um, in the Borderlands region. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the th- uh, and the fact that she was uh, pioneering in many ways, working as a woman in the field of architecture here in El Paso at a time where there were no others. Mm-hmm. Nationwide, there were very few women who were practicing architecture. And, mm-hmm. and so one of the great things that, um, uh, that my professor, uh, uh, Dr. Bulinks, over at the College of Architecture, a uh, course that she has taught uh, in previous semesters, and yes, I still measure time in semesters. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Dr. Dr. Bulinks has taught a course about women architects of the American West, and it is a it is a remarkable survey course, and it is very much a uh, an enlightenment in in the practice of architecture of a undertold facet of American architectural history. So you know, Welch is important because we've made we made comment about her trip to Southern California, mm-hmm. but she also you know, she she is a gentlewoman architect in many ways. She went mm-hmm. to places such as Mexico City, Guadalajara, San Diego, California, San Antonio, Texas. She was going to places to look at buildings and to incorporate design ideas in in residential design here in El Paso. Mm-hmm. Um, the entire number of commercial buildings that she designed equals one. The old, the old A.B. Poe Chrysler dealership on ah, Texas uh-huh. Avenue. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with that building, but that's the only commercial building that she designed. Interesting. So the Lerner Department Store in downtown that has the, the, the prow, the, the, it looks like a ship. It's on the site. site San Antonio, mm-hmm. right by the Caples building, California right. from the Caples. Um, no, no, no. She did not design that building. She, um, it was built um, 1942, 43. At the time that she was working, but no, uh, that building is not of hers. She has only one commercial building. Um, but what what uh, what I'd mentioned earlier about you know that uh, trying to piece together uh, her work is a is an exercise in forensic science, and and uh, the, to to conclude uh, the fact that uh, she lived here until 1976 mm-hmm. and and then moved to uh, Southern California. Uh, to be closer to her son, sure. she lived there for the last five years of her life, and as as uh, as her life was coming to an end, um, uh, again, fourteen years ago, we we uh, spoke with her son Elvin and her mm-hmm. grandson over at the Burgess house, and and um, um, I mentioned to to Elvin Welch, I asked him a question that. Uh, I was having so much difficulty. How much, you know, I admire your mother's work, but I'm, I'm having a lot of trouble trying to find where her her papers, her her drawings are archived. Are they still in a private collection? Do you own them? Um, do you know where, do you have any leads on where I might be able to find them? And uh, uh, he answered the question in a very serious manner. He, he looked at us and, and began to tell a story about how his mom worked very hard and that she was very creative and very talented but she was the only woman working in in the field of architecture in El Paso at that time and so mm-hmm. she had some pretty difficult professional barriers that were in front of her and and uh, I would describe it as she was handled pretty roughly is mm-hmm. the way I would describe it um, and so resentment uh, professional resentment developed years go by her health is failing. She is putting all of her her uh, affairs in order at the end mm-hmm. of her life, and and so he was telling us uh, telling us that one of her final wishes was to um, was for her son to take everything, all of her drawings, all of her business records, all the all the architectural work, um, it, up into Crazy Cat Canyon here above downtown, and to burn it. To burn everything, mm-hmm. and when he when he said this, very matter of factly, I, I mean my, 
my fear rose, and I muttered something along the lines of, well, certainly, you know, thank goodness you, you didn't do that. You know, thank goodness. Common sense prevailed. And he looked at me very seriously again, and he said, well, she was my mother, and I am her only son. Of course, I would honor my mother's last wishes, including that one. Which is why this is an exercise in forensic analysis, as you said, to yes. continue analyzing that here. Well, we're going to have to leave it there for today because we're out of time here for this program here. Again, guest has been Troy Ainsworth, Historic Preservation Specialist with the City of Las Cruces. Again, more on him, his work, what you have written about these things. Uh, notes on AridAmerica.com. That's notes on A-R-I-D-America.com. Troy, thank you very much for coming in to talk to us about this and about the research you've done into all of this here today. Thank you for having me, Andrew. We'll uh, see you next time. Thank absolutely. You. Thank you all for joining us here for the El Paso Radio Show and your host, Andrew J. Polk. We'll see you next week on the program. Have a great one, y'all.